candidates in different kind of races. Look at the governor who won in Michigan and got those Hillary Clinton voters back in the Democratic column. Meanwhile, Donald Trump, his speech the day after the election was essentially a scolding for Republicans who did not get in line. He danced on the grave of Mia Love, who hasn't, her race has not been called. Mm -hmm. And by the way, she's a lovely person. She is a black Republican woman. He should be thanking her for being a Republican in this party today. And still, he would not let her be the kind of candidate that she felt she needed to be to win that race. Um, and if you put this in a nutshell, where does this go? You have women like Barbara Comstock and Mia Love losing, potentially. Paul Ryan retiring. And candidates like Chris Collins and Duncan Hunter, who have been indicted <laughs> winning. That is well, that, that's, a that, that's because of scary that, listen, prospect. That, that's the problem. It's the truth. Right? I mean, but, you, have, <laughs> you have these safe seats that, you know, doesn't matter if you're a member of the far right or the far left, you're going to win regardless. I wanted, it's to, also I wanted to agree with you. in the image of Donald Trump. I believe is what Amanda is saying. No, no, also, I, right? I wanted to agree with you for one second, which may be rare, which may be a moment <laughs> in TV history, because I, I think you have a point when you talk about how Democrats have to focus on working class people in this mm -hmm. country. Yeah. Now, I'm, I, I have to say that I'm kind of sick and tired of people saying working class when they mean white. But I mean working class, uh, all of those. Yeah, I'm not yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying that, that that's, that's coded right? language. But what I'm saying is I'm talking about all of those Hispanic workers, African-American uh, workers, absolutely. those white workers Re who are Republicans male workers. need to go after those votes. But, but yeah. this, is, this is where we shift the discussion. Because now it's not an anti-Donald Trump message, but this is in the this is in the laps of Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi hmm. and how they govern. Yes, right. And I mean, I may be moving too far ahead, no, but, but this is true. this is why Democrats are like, OK, we, we understand the demographic changes are here. But now we have to actually legislate yeah. and lead right, because those, those working class people are going to move up the economic ladder and they're going to see. Maybe some policies they don't like in the Democratic well, They party. used to be it's, Democrats, right? right? I want to uh, I want to toss it back to Chris uh, in, uh, in New York. Chris. All right. For all of the what maybes, that brings our focus right to Florida. That is the state for all the elections that we're watching. That has the most at stake in terms of the optics. Of course, there are no House seats there going on. You have a congressional seat. You have a governor's race. Uh, and they are both in very, very sharp focus. Now, Republicans have ratcheted up the tension down there. They're claiming that there is fraud that the Democrats are trying to steal elections. They have offered no proof of that. In fact, the Secretary of State, who is a Republican, has said he has no specific and credible claim of fraud. Law enforcement that was asked by the governor to look into it, they went and said, do you need our help? They were told no. So this isn't about facts, it's about feelings. Uh, and there's somebody who's in the center of it all, the election supervisor in Broward County, Brenda Snipes, joins me now. Thank you for taking this opportunity, Ms. Snipes. Well, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I look forward to it. All right. Let's start with the biggest question. Will you get your counting done on time, the Thursday deadline you have, the Friday deadline with military and out-of-country ballots after it? Will you be ready on Thursday? Absolutely. My team and I are working very hard, very diligently to make sure that that happens. So you're saying 100% you'll have the count done to everybody's satisfaction? I'm saying 100%. We right. have a staff that's highly trained, they're capable, they're competent, and we've set the goal of making sure that all of our information is in according to the schedule. You have been cited, Ms. Snipes, as a problem in this process, that you're not doing the job with transparency and you're not doing it with the efficiency that gives confidence in the overall process. How do you respond? Well, you know, uh, that's probably, those are opinions that people have put forward for their own various reasons. But I'd like to call to your attention that this midterm election, in addition to running very smoothly, was one of the most highly participated midterm elections probably that we've had in 20 years or more. Uh, over 700,000 folks decided that they wanted to have a voice in this election. They came forward, they voted, we are counting their votes now in a recount procedure, but they said, I don't want to be left out. I want to be an important contributing citizen of this process. And they came forward, and we appreciate that. All right, but you have rules that you're supposed to abide by in transparency. Uh, that is very important. You refused to give the Scott campaign the information they wanted. It had to go to court. The judge said you had to turn it over. You didn't turn it over by the deadline that was given. That is cast as a partisan spat, that you're doing that because you're a Democrat. How do you respond to that? 
Well, I was talking with a woman today as she came into our office, and uh, she made some statement about um, a partisan statement, and she said, I know that you're a Republican. I said I have been a Democrat all my life. In this position, I have been very focused on party because I want to treat all of the voters in Broward County the same. And I think if you'd ask the voters, you'd find that I have that reputation. I don't have a reason to hold anything back, except that I don't want to get information that's incomplete or incorrect at that particular time. So uh, concerns, uh, uh, allegations that we are not transparent. There's one comment that my staff, and we work very closely together, always bring to my attention is that Dr. Snipes, you'll just take time to walk anybody through our election warehouse. I think that's very important because that gives those persons who take the time to come to us to see our operation a chance to see behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to make an election possible, to make it efficient, and to make it something that voters want to participate in. And obviously we're doing that. Well, if over 700,000 participated in the midterm. Well, if it were that obvious, Rick Scott wouldn't have had to go to court, though, with all due respect, doctor, right? I mean, he had to go to court to get this tour that you're saying you give to everybody for no reason. You wouldn't give it to him or his people. He had to go to court to get it. Fair criticism? Um, no, it's not. No, it's not. We don't, um, we don't select who we give out information to. We give information to those persons who have requested it. And I believe the public records request says in, in a timely manner, and we attempt to do that, and we try to balance everything. We're finishing up one of the biggest elections, as I mentioned earlier, for the midterm. So we're trying to get everything complete. And as far as I know, we had a team working on that. Right. And I'm pretty sure that they got the information out. Now, after that, the central criticism comes to whether or not all the ballots that are supposed to be counted are, and whether or not ballots that should not be counted are being counted. Uh, your critics point to 2020 rejected provision, 22 rejected provisional ballots that were put.